Hi everyone. So uh, I'm going to continue here talking about the real gas equation. So remember that in the previous video I just talked about the uh, concept that you know ideal and real gases are different and they're different because of the conditions at which the gases are uh, experiencing. So at the condition of high pressure the ideal behavior is starting to be less and less and then you start to have more and more um, uh, deviation from the ideal behavior because the container, you know, the volume of the container starts to get uh, smaller and smaller relative to the distance between particles and that's what we talked about in uh, the first video and we talked about the fact that that results in something called the volume correction uh, to the ideal gas equation and so let me just show you the um, picture that I drew uh, before in the first video where I said that you know at the larger volume you start I mean uh, at the more particles higher pressure you start to have uh, other gas particles in pr uh, the presence of uh, one gas particle and as a result you have to subtract the volume of all these other gas particles to account for um, you know their volume so you can no longer ignore the uh, volume of the other gases uh, like you did in the ideal gas situation because now you have a lot more gas particles okay so remember that the correction that we did was to add this term in the ideal gas equation so we started initially with P equals nRT over V now we subtract from the V a component a term here which is n times b where n is the number of moles and b here is what we call the volume factor for each gas and that uh, term basically corrects for the volume of the gases that are uh, you know that the gases occupy okay so now we're going to talk about the second correction if you think about it again when you have you know a lot more particles right just the same way as we had uh, earlier with the uh, volume situation when we have a lot more particles okay just as shown right here now if these particles are not moving very fast or they're moving more slowly which again remember that that would mean that at lower temperature right because temperature corresponds to speed so at lower temperature these particles if there there's a lot of them there are a lot more chances that they will make some kind of intermolecular um, attraction okay you know again compared to the ideal case where there's only one or two particles in a volume of this size and chances are they're not going to make any kind of interaction because they're moving fast and there's a lot of distance between them but now the distance between them is a lot shorter and they're moving more slowly okay so that's why temperature is also a factor in in making the condition less ideal now if they're making interaction okay if they're making interaction with each other if these particles are making interaction with each other as we no longer can make the assumption that the particles will what hit the wall as often as it would before right or at least hit it with uh, as much force as, as it would in the ideal case. In the ideal case, every time we see a, um, you know, every time we see a, a gas particle hit the wall, okay, this particle hit this wall, this particle hit this wall, we total all of those hits or collisions and we call the total number of collisions the pressure of the, um, of the gas sample, okay? Now when you have a lot more gases, uh, gas particles in this case, and these gases are making interaction with each other, so let me just change the color here to illustrate the interaction. So if they're making interaction with each other, okay, these particles are interacting with each other, they're still going to hit the wall, but they're not going to hit the wall with as strong a force as they had before because now the interaction is kind of cutting down uh, on some of that force that they originally have uh, if they don't have any interaction like in the ideal case okay so what's that going to result in terms of the equation so going back here to the ideal gas equation now earlier we had it corrected for volume now we're gonna do correction for um, correction for pressure okay because as you can see in uh, our uh, explanation just now the 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 factor that's going to be affected most is the pressure right because as a result of that interaction you no longer have uh, as much force if you no longer have as much force that means the pressure is going to be cut down somehow so in as a result 
what we say is that this is the pressure if there's no intermolecular interaction. If you have intermolecular interaction, you're going to have to subtract from that pressure a certain amount of, um, you know, pressure that's lost because of that interaction, that molecular interaction. So we put a negative sign here to subtract. And then we say that the subtraction, the amount of interaction that happens will be due to the concentration of the gas that you have in there. And concentration, of course, is N over V, right, number of moles over volume. And because of reasons of dealing with large number of particles, this quantity is actually squared. Uh, you don't necessarily need to know why this is in this in this particular um, instance, but just know that that concentration is squared in this case. But the concentration is then multiplied by this factor here, which is called A. Okay. Now you notice that earlier we used this constant B. Now we use this constant A, and that is often called the Van der Waals constant A, and that basically is a measure of the strength of inter molecular interaction. IM is just stands for intermolecular interaction between the gas particles. Okay. The stronger the attraction is, the larger the value of A, which means the less, you know, the, the more you subtract the pressure, right? Because the stronger the attraction, we go back to that previous page, the stronger the attraction between these particles, then the less uh, amount of force the particle will hit the wall and as a result the total pressure would be less as well okay so this equation right here that I wrote at the bottom the whole thing right there which is P um, I'm just gonna highlight this here P equals nRT over V minus NB okay in parentheses minus A times N over V squared this is what we refer to as the real gas equation okay so again to differentiate it from the ideal gas equation which is just P remember the ideal gas equation would just be P nRT over V okay so that's the ideal gas equation but once you subtract the volume and you subtract the pressure as a result of the intermolecular interaction then you get the real gas equation. This is often also called the Van der Waals. Again, I'm just going to um, abbreviate Van der Waals name, VDW, Van der Waals real gas equation or Van der Waals equation, okay, for real gas. So that's the equation for the real gas. That's the equation for the ideal gas, okay? So again, I want to highlight the actual, you know, experimental measurements for these um, uh, behavior changes right in terms of real versus ideal gas so here you can see actually a sample of argon uh, compared to a sample of, of you know an ideal gas what we would expect in the behavior of an ideal gas and you can see here as pressure goes up right so the the x-axis here is pressure as pressure goes up that argon starts to change its um, molar volume okay um, different than what we would expect for an ideal gas. So that's just to, you know, explain that there is a difference in terms of volume uh, when you start to uh, uh, move away from the ideal gas condition. And here's the effect on, uh, as a result of intermolecular uh, uh, forces or intermolecular interaction. Again, you can see here at lower temperature, right, here's xenon in the green, and then here's the uh, ideal gas comparison in red. And you can see that the xenon starts to, um, the xenon curve start to move away from the ideal gas curve as you go to lower and lower temperatures. So the x-axis here is uh, temperature, and of course, uh, room temperature is around you know 300 Kelvin or so, so it's around here. But then as you go to lower and lower temperature, you see that deviation gets even worse and worse. Okay, so that those two, um, again, those two uh, factors are. Uh, written out in this equation in the uh, real gas equation which again is the one shown here in the lower box and so that's the one that you would have to apply if you're being asked to calculate a real gas situation okay so what I'm gonna do is in the next um, in the next uh, video I'm gonna work through just kind of an example of a real gas equation but before I do that to close off this video I want to mention that we had these two constants called the A and the B constants in the Van der Waals equation. 
Again, remember, A is a measure of intermolecular interaction, which is how strongly each molecule interacts. In, in this specific case, we really care mostly about attraction. So how strongly are these gas particles attracting each other? Because the attraction is what's cutting down the total pressure of the gas, right? And so you can see that different gases have different values. And that has to do a lot with, you know, what kind of gas we have, whether it's polar, nonpolar, and so on. Um, the second thing you can look here is B, the constant B, and remember that that's a measure of volume, right? That's a measure of the size of the particle. So the larger B is, the more um, volume it's taking up in the container. As a result, the more you have to worry about um, the gases behaving less ideally, okay? Uh, both of these factors are roughly correlated with molar mass because the larger a gas particle is generally the more you know electrons and protons it has and as a result you're going to have more electrostatic interaction also of course the larger the molar mass usually you tend to get larger size as well so that's why both of them are roughly correlated with molar mass okay but uh, these are the actual value that's measured for the constant A and constant B in the Van der Waals equation.